How Epilepsy Affects Memory It's a well-known fact, that seizures result in memory loss and other cognitive deficits in patients with Alzheimer's disease, but how this happens was not clear. In a study published in the journal Nature Medicine, on October 16, 2017, a team of researchers from Baylor College of Medicine, Houston and Thomas Jefferson University, Philadelphia, reveals a mechanism that explain how seizures can lead to long-lasting cognitive deficits. Dr. Jeannie Chin, assistant professor of neuroscience at Memory and Brain Research Center, Baylor College of Medicine, Houston is the chief author. A better understanding of this new mechanism may lead to future strategies to reduce cognitive deficits in Alzheimer's disease and memory loss associated with epilepsy. It's been hard to understand how infrequent seizures can lead to persistent changes in memory in patients with Alzheimer's disease. To solve this puzzle, the researchers studied on Alzheimer's disease models, focusing on the genetic changes that seizures might trigger in the hippocampus, the memory center of the brain, that could lead to loss of memory or other cognitive deficits. They measured the levels of proteins involved in memory and learning and found that levels of the protein delta FOSB is strikingly increased in the hippocampus of Alzheimer's disease, that had seizures. Delta FOSB is a protein associated with many neurological conditions linked to persistent brain activity of specific brain regions, involved in addiction. In this study, the researchers found that after a seizure, the delta FOSB protein remains in the hippocampus for an unusually long time, its half-life is 8 days. Most proteins have a half-life that is between hours and a day or two. Delta FOSB is a transcription protein which regulate the expression of other proteins. These findings predict that the increased delta FOSB levels might be responsible for suppressing the production of proteins that are necessary for learning and memory. When the levels of delta FOSB increase, levels of other proteins, such as calbindin, decreases. Calbindin also has been known for a long time to be involved in Alzheimer's disease and epilepsy and delta FOSB might be regulating the production of calbindin. The scientists showed that delta FOSB can bind to the gene calbindin suppressing the expression of this protein. When the delta FOSB activity is prevented or experimentally calbindin increased in animal models, calbindin levels were restored and the memory was improved. Delta FOSB and calbindin are key regulators of memory. These findings answered the question of how even infrequent seizures can have such lasting detrimental effects on memory. Delta FOSB has a relatively long half-life, therefore even when seizures are infrequent, Delta FOSB remains in the hippocampus for weeks acting like a break, reducing the production of calbindin and other proteins, and disrupting the consequent brain activity involved in memory. The scientists found the same changes in delta FOSB and gal binding levels in the hippocampus of Alzheimer's disease patients and in the temporal lobe of epilepsy patients. However, they underscore that it is too soon to know whether regulating delta FOSB or gal binding could improve or prevent memory problems or other cognitive deficits in people with Alzheimer's disease. The levels of delta FOSB and gal binding are effective markers of brain activity in the hippocampus and memory function. These markers could potentially help assess clinical therapies for Alzheimer's and other diseases with seizures. Thank you.